Alright, the time is 12.22 and there is some shit going down in Disco Elysium Town. I forgot the name of the town. What's the town called? I don't know. It's this. What did I level up? I level up. Can I, beco can I become more powerful? Interesting. I kind of want some physique so I don't die next time I uh, graze my knee on <laughs> a, a rough patch of ground. So uh, I'm going to put a point in physique. Uh, wait, no, wait. Can I only level... No, okay, interesting. I for some reason just thought I could do this, but I'm, I'm being a dipshit. I level up an individual skill. Um, do you think this is the one? This is the one that will help me... Or do you think pain threshold, maybe? They both increase... Oh, right, physique-based, physique yeah, that makes sense. So do you think any of these will increase my my physique? My, my hit points? I don't actually know. <laughs> Just specking pure, purely into, into drugs would be pretty fun, honestly. I don't know why I already have level 2 in this. Did I put a point in this at some point? I don't think I did. Tune into the city. Let the body take control. Threaten people. Um, healthy organs. I think maybe I just... I maybe just get pain threshold. Maybe just get pain threshold. Let's go with that. Still only the one hit point. Okay. Well, I was hoping... I was hoping I had improved that by doing that, but I guess not. Fritty! Fritty! I don't know what this is, but we're going in here, apparently. <laughs> I liked the fact that it had so many T's, it got me excited. Oh, who are you? That abrupt cut was due to my dogs going haywire because uh, the Liberal Democrats put a, uh, a flyer through my door um, under the impression that anyone is ever going to vote for the Liberal Democrats ever again. I learned my lesson. I voted for the Lib Dems back in... Uh, 2010, and then whatever the fuck it was that Nick Clegg decided to stick his head so far up David Cameron's ass that he would never see daylight again. So, you know, not exactly a big fan of those people. I don't think anyone is. I, I don't know how they're still a political party. Anyway, that's my uh, my uh, British politics segue for a moment. A melancholy pop song plays on the radio. The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says... One bottle equals ten cents. What is this machine? Hmm? Oh, that's the tear machine. Oh. But what is it? It's a machine for tear. You know, you find tear outside, like bottles or whatever, and put it in the machine, then it gives you money. I see. How do I pick up tear for the tear you machine? You need a bag, I guess. We used to have some, but we gave them all out, so... I've never heard such a, a, a genuinely believable British accent in a video game before. I'm suddenly thinking that literally every other British person in a video game has been an American doing a British accent, because this is what an actual British woman sounds like. <laughs> and it's it's startling me. <laughs> Feel free to use it if you find a bag, though. I'm sure there are some out there somewhere. All right. Good to know. I can make money by recycling, I guess. I can't imagine that will uh, make me a lot of money, but, you know, every little helps, I suppose. What's this? You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritter slogan on the back. Uh-huh. The packages are small, discreet, sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. Uh, I'll pass for now, I think. I'm not skillful enough to steal that. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? What's that magazine you're reading? You mean this? She looks at the cover, boasting a colourful photo of two girls kissing. Ooh. This is Pop Stars. It's got, like, famous people in it. It's not for sale. Can it be? Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode, featured on page 34. This speaks to you. 
Forget about all that. What's this fashion police feature? Um, it's where they rate different outfits famous people wear. It's kind of funny. They're kind of mean. It's about who's the most stylish. I bet your hat would take that prize. Um, no. I don't like it. I hate it. You don't like the hat? Crazy. We are not the fashion police. We're the real police. Uh, let's proceed. I have some questions um, for you. Okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... No, no, you see, that's wrong. You're meant to... If, if you've ever worked retail in your life, you'll know you're simultaneously meant to engage and, and listen to any old fucking drivel that any customer has to say, but simultaneously get all your work done without being distracted. It's genuinely impressive. Can you tell me anything about the dead body? Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Well, thank you for your help. Uh -huh. uh, she really isn't very cooperative, is she? But I guess that's about the best we can hope for around here, considering everyone hates the police. Uh, there's some other stuff, but I, I don't actually care. <laughs> I got places to be. You can have a croissants and plants shop <laughs> and, and enjoy it. And raincoats, I guess. A weird smattering of things. I haven't had a job for years, so that's cool. Jobs suck. What's going on over here, lads? Not a lot of people we can talk to. I guess we'll talk to this guy. He seems to be in charge. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells towards the harbour gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot and oddly screechy for a man of his size. Uh, what's going on here? Hold up and stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered alpha male turns to you. He's a full head taller than anybody else. You're here to fuck with us. Beat the honest worker down. Why should I? We're here to fight for a cause. Stripes usually have problems with people who have causes. Okay, then I'm thinking now. Good. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. But what if the work is is to the left? I'm sorry. Besides, <laughs> we're not that different. It helps if people see us talking, cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. What kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment. To make a salary and feed their family. Is he Hitler saluting? <laughs> I was distracted because I, I was reading the text and I looked over and his arm was just, you know, fully extended off to the off to the left there. His manner of speaking is wooden. The tone of voice bland and uninspired. Almost as if compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Uh, regardless, I have some questions for you. Maybe you should ask them. Like, why we're not allowed to make a living here? Shame on you! We have families to feed, you piece of shit. He points his finger at the man sitting on the railing. So do we, Scott. Uh, okay. Ah, there's a strike a going on. So what, is the union... The union forcing a strike on the workers? Is that what's going on here? Because these guys seem to want to work, but this guy's calling them scabs. So I guess... It's very confusing. Who are all these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. Man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in time of crisis. If union fucks don't want work, they ought to let in those who do want work. Well, this is a very moral gray area, isn't it? These guys clearly need money to feed their families or whatever, but the, the strikers are presumably striking because they need better living conditions or working conditions or whatever, you know? So it's... It's, it's a bit... Bit of a thing. I have a question. 
Why do all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No, they follow the rules of the market, the rules of the economy, because they were given a job to do! So what exactly is your goal here? We were promised work. We'd be in there, working, if the bastards hadn't shut the gates. Okay, I wanted to discuss something else. This physically impressive man tower has turned his attention back to the gates. He ignores your presence. I guess I'm gonna leave then. Interestingly though, considering the Union apparently run everything around here, there seems to be quite a lot of people against the Union. Which is curious. Curious, maybe I can leverage these as uh, help for my investigation. The Greater Revachol Industrial Harbour. Okay. Oh, there's the strike breaker, man. Scab? Asks a man with jolly eyes, tilting his head. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. Smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time. I'm not a scab, I'm a cop. I was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> Psst, show him your stolen card. Now has to arrive the perfect moment. Speaking of, what brings the RCM here, to the wild north? Come to I'm see the strike? I'm, I've just told him I'm a cop. Why would I try and pretend I'm a worker suddenly? That's fucking stupid. Um... I come to Martinez investigating a murder. Murder, huh? That sounds like a lot of hard work. You'd never see me investigating a murder. You're right. It's almost impossible. I'm 91% sure I'll never get it solved. Probably not. I wouldn't even know where to start with that. Much better here at the harbor for an honest union man like me. Uh, nice talk. I'll get moving. How the fuck am I up here now? Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. How did I get up here? I thought I was. I thought I was calling up to him. I wasn't paying attention again to what's going on on screen. I've just realised I can make his head twitch out though. Um, I guess. Oh, is this? Is there like a staircase up here? Yeah. Okay. Right. That makes sense. Did not realise that. I thought this guy was like out of reach from all the the strikers. I didn't realise he was just sitting here and you know boldly hanging out in front of all of them. A hermetically sealed door locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking on this one. A notion in case of a notice even in case of strike press button behind guard. Measure head makes all men quiver. Who's measure head? Is this measure head? He's another large fella. There's a lot of large fellas about. Nobody betrays you. Degeneracy. Yeah, Measure Head. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. <laughs> you got me. My body does betray my degeneracy. <laughs> my body is unimportant. I'm with the police if we need to get into the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to Unruh. His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Alhul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I don't have a problem with alcohol, I just drink a little on the weekends. Your mouth moves, but the one who speaks is Alhul. You are but a vessel for the ghoul now. Very little of yourself remain. I'm assuming our goal is alcohol. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Okay, this is getting a little bit outside my uh, <laughs> my understandable uh, concept zone. Um, what the fuck is the influence of the Ham Sandwich race? <laughs> 
Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? Hmm. Hmm. First, let me make this clear. I'm not a drunk, I'm a cop. I just have a drink every now and then. Everyone does. The ethanol fungus is deep within your nervous system, pulling the strings. You are merely its pooper now. I see no hope for you or your kind. The race stuff is unimportant. Here, I just need you to help me do my job, please. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Hablo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. Uh huh. You dominated lesser cultures. Like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Hey, that, that is like a knife to my heart. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just call me out like that. Just because I happen to be obsessed with sadness and frivolous pop culture doesn't mean you have to. M make this ho a whole thing about race, you know? You will be superseded. Isn't that right, Bay? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him. Just out of reach. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbour. You are right about all this. Now I just need you to get me into the harbour. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. What the fuck is this dude's issue? What the fuck, Bring man? Bring your troops to the Simenan Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. Oh, well, that's quite nice. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Wool. Your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the odds to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Okay, this guy is not only racist, but also homophobic, apparently. But he's also very big and scary, so, um, I guess he wins. There may be a peaceful solution to this. You could internalize Meshachet's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Wouldn't that mean I have to become a Seminese supremacist myself? Well, not as such. What you do with the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, or accept them and become an advanced racist. An advanced racist? Uh. Hmm. Three percent chance to knock him out, I mean. <laughs> See, I can conceptualize the race theory, but <laughs> the concept of becoming an advanced racist? Not super keen on that. Not super keen. Uh, you know anything about this mug? He does not so much as glance at the object. This your kind of thing? Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. He had nothing to do with it. So what are those tattoos of yours supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures towards the lorry man down the street. Welcome to Revershaw. You hear him yell at a redhead woman visiting a fritter nearby. He must think redheads are immigrants. <laughs> I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. You're right, that's craniometric perfection. My race does not stand a chance. Correct. 
<sighs> um, honestly, I have no reason to get into the docks yet, so I'll leave this. But it's nice to know I have an 83% chance of uh, success, should I need to. We'll return to this as and when it becomes necessary. It's 12.50 now. I'm pretty certain it was 1 o'clock to, to meet with the union workers in um, the Whirling in Rags, right? I'm pretty sure. Not 100%, but pretty sure. So I guess we'll just kill a little bit more time. The lorry's probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. I don't know if time passes just like as you play or if it's Use like a... In the traffic jam. Like, every time you do an interaction, it, it jumps forward, you know. Uh, look in the window. The windows are clear. They've been recently washed. You can see a lorry man's cabin with personal belongings. Stickers, insignia. What kind of stickers and insignia? The driver has adorned his space with a substantial collection of peculiar paraphernalia. Proclamations about honor, strength, and purity are glued to various panels. Is everyone a racist around here or what? A large metal pendant hangs from the rear view mirror. The pendant features a sun crown with wavy rays. And what about the back seat? The back end of the cabin has a small perch to sleep, large ashtrays. There are several suns and wheels sewn into the curtains. A book with ragged edges catches your notice. The front cover features a large muscular man. The title reads, Man from Eelmdal in the lost city of the Pygmies. Racist nationalist paraphernalia. Not unusual in this part of town. This is our guy. Ah, uh, yeah, that adds up. You think this lorry belongs to our tough guy? Likely, yes. This guy's proud of who he is. Drapes it all over his machine. Alright. Oh, got a bit of experience out of that, so. Was clearly worth my time. And this one? A foreign car kept in good condition. Hey. See? See, you can be foreign and not get your car destroyed. Maybe it's not that bad around here after all. Who the fuck are you? A small, wrinkled woman does not greet you. She nods along to something on her radio. A photograph is clutched in her hands, and there is a warm smile on her face. The photo, an ambrotype from the turn of the century, as golden as her smile. It's the warmth of a winter night's fire. Maybe she could give you comfort and shelter, some cigarettes and food money. Maybe she's your... No, excuse me, ma'am, I'd like to ask some questions. No response. Wherever this woman is, your words fail to reach her. Snap at her fingers. Wait. The lieutenant stops you before you can snap. She's just a distracted old woman. Better to leave her alone. Why? Why? I just told you why. You say so. Alright, well, I guess this is, uh... I don't know if she's like a... If it's like a dementia thing, if it's like a drugs thing, I guess we won't know. Ruins full of snow, no one lives here anymore. Okay. Is there anything we can... There is something we can do with this statue, cool. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing toward the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air, with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philip III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philip II, the opulent, Father of Philip the Fourth, the insane. Okay. As you look up, you notice something about the statue. There are some odd indentations on the king's chess piece. Uh, yeah, what did this king do? What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? Because I had a 58% chance of knowing what this guy did many centuries ago, alright? High above you, the king stands triumphantly oblivious to your memory trouble. So what are these indentations? Something with great kinetic energy seems to have impacted the cuirass around where the heart is. Bullet? Someone shot him in the heart. Interesting. Lieutenant, has someone shot the king? 
Okay, I can't see it, but I take your word for it. What do you think? Well, Martinez is riddled with bullet holes. This place saw a lot of action during the revolution. But the statue is recently renovated, so maybe a joke? Target practice or a political statement? Political. It's a king and he's shot. Why not? What this shows us is guns aren't too uncommon here. And people still shoot them. Sometimes at kings. The king stands high above you, surveying the bay. Mute and indifferent to your sightings. Okay. Not much to gain from that. Maybe I could have learned something if I had succeeded my 58% chance. But uh, a bold slogan, human ox, covers the truck. What's that, people smuggling? A bit slightly on the nose uh, company name, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah, we sell uh, humans and oxes. That's it. <laughs> human ox, you get it? It's 12.59, so why don't we head back? To the old whirling in Hurlags. Uh Again, I'm not sure if, I, if time will pass unless I actually do something. We've not spoken to this lad though, so maybe maybe this is a good way of doing that. I am a gander and a hunter and a gatherer. Yeah, like a traveler. Yeah. I like this guy. He sings nice. The man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. I'm gonna keep listening. From another planet. Hey there. Uh, what's going on here? It's the jam, my man. He motions towards the sprawl of lorries in a sweeping gesture. The air from the east is thick with the smell of crude oils, heavy metals, and other byproducts of the modern era. You could almost taste it. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates up the street are shut tight, no explanation given. Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all around clusterfuck. Yeah, but it's not really my problem, is it? Because I'm here to just solve a murder. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon days. Limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. So how long have you been here? Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes and mazout. Uh, extravagantly phrased, but I can roll with it. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me. What do you need? Know anything about the dead man? The one hanging behind the hostel there? He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. Busy with what? Analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. And your conclusion? A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. So what are you hauling anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Ah, oh, fair enough. Relax. He's merely joking. Wicked, I always wanted a friend in the underworld. Ha, <laughs> no, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This hall of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Oxens. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. So nothing illegal then? Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. Alright, I had another question. Taps his fingers rhythmically. Tell me more about I'm talking here. Tell me more about this strike. It's like, whatever's going on over at the docks. Workers got a blockade set up, making demands. No way in or out. Going on strike would probably help you dodge a bullet or two. And what's the union demanding? Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company. 
Forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. What do you think the company wants? They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. ka -ching. He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Um, I'm good for now. Good talk. Don't be a stranger. I like that guy. My new favorite guy in the game. Alright. Alright, I'll use the other entrance. I don't know why they're so against me using this one, but fine, I suppose. I'm hoping, I'm hoping the Union uh, have rocked up now. I mean, I know I met some Union men up there, but yeah, this is, this is what I want to get involved in right here. Uh, this isn't the place. The dishes are dry and the smell of chemicals and pine trees. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods toward the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Garanzi and Kubek. Okay, it's definitely not his name. Whatever you do, please don't call him Garanzi Kubek. Please, it's not funny. <sighs> it's so tempting to play the arsehole in this game, but knowing that I have one HP and the chance that this guy could just punch me and kill me, um, I'm having to play everything super safe right now. Uh, hello, sir. Got some time for a few questions? The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got some impressive parts there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. What an odd thing to say. <laughs> you see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Out of duty, we might find something pertinent to the investigation. Hmm. Yes. I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough. As a side investigation. Yes, a mini side investigation. Is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Try to push on the door. The door does not budge. Too powerful. An aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. So is the is this union meeting not on yet? Hey, Gar. Gar, I'm. Can I'm... I help you? Oh. So I talked to Sylvie. <laughs> He does not look too pleased. Oh, but he should be. Lay it on him. <laughs> Why is that my only option here? Why is that my only option? There's two options of bail and one that is just the worst. Just the worst. But I don't want to lay that on him. Of course you do. This was your plan all along. This is how you 
fix it for them by answering the woman question. Turns out she's a whore who likes to ride the cock carousel. Wonderful. It is. It's wonderful. What? What does that mean? Cock carousel? No time for lectures. The point is, you're losing at her nasty mind games. Sylvie's a total psycho. God, does it mean you talk to her? What else did she say about me? What else do you need? Well, that was roughly it. The man leans his hands on the counter and sighs. His head drops between the shoulders, heavy and defeated. She broke the bird, you know. The great skewer. I found it on the ground with a broken wing on the morning she left. I should have known. It was her way of telling me to piss off. I should stuff it up my ass. He stops and stares at the counter. Or you broke the bird. It can also be that. I think Sylvie even. Yes, the bird is connected to this. It's a symbol of hope and she broke it. Yeah, man, signals. Mixed signals. This is classic cock carousel behavior. <laughs> cock carousel. I think I understand now. That's what they ride until, like, 39. Oh, Christ almighty. <laughs> I didn't realize I had accidentally, semi-accidentally, committed to uh, taking the quest line that turns this guy into a complete fucking incel. We ride the cock carousel until the clock runs out. Here, have the rest. He corks the bottle and hands it to you. Now, let me have a drink and think about this shit for a moment on my own. He turns into the blood red liquid in the cup. And there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? Another situation fixed by Dr. Love. That's what they call me Dr. Love. The Love Doctor. Uh, um, hey, I was meant to be asking about that door. I kind of forgot about that. Can I help you? No, it's not an option, turns out. Turns out it's not a thing I can actually ask about. Um, right, well. I may have to consult my notebook at this point. I am, I mean, I feel like we have methods of getting into the dock, harbor, harbor dock. <laughs> But it's not really like a reason, there's no reason to do that yet, is the weird thing, right? Hmm. Hmm. Huh. Wait a second. Where is this? Interact. It's the legend you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board, barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Yeah, maybe I should have, like, read my notes at some point. <laughs> uh, anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper. Or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper, desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic clipboard. It's a metaphor for you. <laughs> Fair. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolour patterns, reaching its tendrils across the entire pages. The paper itself is checkered, with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, Case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages 
falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20, maybe 30 cases, undertaken, not completed, mind you. Oh, he hasn't completed a single case in the whole year? Jesus Christ. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Oh, holy shit. What do you mean? Is that all? Uh, is two cases a week a good case load, Lieutenant? Huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Two? That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. It was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case into subtasks to accomplish. Once all the tasks are accomplished, the case is complete. Commit to paper. Sadly, the letter only comes with an old worn down lead pencil. It's unfitting of this monumental event. The letter only comes with an old worn down lead pencil. It will do, barely. You're really a... Uh... You're really focusing in on that worn down lead pencil. Uh, Kim, do you have a pen? The lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder, like large caliber bullets on an ammo belt. He is not really saying anything, just standing there, looking at them. Uh, fine, I'll just use this crappy pencil. Absolutely motionless at first, then animated slowly, imperceptibly even. The lieutenant begins to browse his notes again, leaving you to the case files. Onto the paper with a brash free hand, uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple, a language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Inspect the victim's body. Interview the cafeteria manager. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. And cross off the ones you've already finished. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. Things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizen's militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Uh, Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna go with the setting sun, because it means nothing. Okay, okay. It's a good name, but it has one problem. This case has nothing to do with the setting sun. At all. It has nothing to do with that, so... Something more concrete, perhaps? Do you have something concrete? Mundane, usual. Usual is boring. We don't do that. The Furies are at home in the mirror. Furies? Yes, well, I don't know. I have to be honest, I'm not experiencing the internal strife that it refers to. And also, could you make it less poetic somehow? Just a normal case name, you know? Think, what would that be? A good normal name. Yes, yes. You know what that normal name is, but it's so plain. Anything else, please. Shit on a stick. Ah, yes. 
I have to tell you, officer, I don't appreciate ironic titles. Other officers will have to use this as reference. If it's idiot or cockfinger. <laughs> cockfinger? <laughs> Is that a serious condition some people so suffer with or something? They're not going to get it. They're going to think an idiot and a cockfinger were on this case. So, do you have something less funny? Fun is outlawed with this guy. What a knock! The Hanged Man. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. The Hanged Man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. I'm going to start calling it The Hanged Man. It's good to be sorted this out. There was mention of a naming convention here? Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. Yes, all caps. One is called The Next World Mural. Another, The Square Bullet Hole Murders. Another yet, The Unsolvable Case. Oh? Others appear more light-hearted. The guy's on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the Uka parlor. Even the rare article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them up close. I'm done inspecting these. You don't exactly close them, so much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Wait, can I read the files now? It's proving to be harder <sighs> than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Mm, I guess I'll browse the yellow papers. In the back, you see thin, translucent copy paper. Some neon yellow, some bright red. All covered in boxes, like marching armies. These look like official forms, waiting to be filled out. Then rip them from the binder and hand them out, according to type of form. What types of forms are there? Three. The topmost are misconduct fines. The middle ones are station calls. And the bottommost are field autopsy forms. Each is easy enough to make sense of. You don't have to be an intellectual giant to do police work. A field autopsy. A dozen pages of thin copy paper, bright red in color. You see the parameters of a deceased human form waiting to be filled in. Age, sex, condition of internal organs. I was kind of hoping there was one that was already filled in about the uh, about the hangman that we could use some information from, but I guess not. A misconduct fine? A monetary penalization ranging from 20 to 250 real. Severe cases allow for 1,000 real, but that requires special paperwork. The details of issuing these fines are spread out over the rest of the fields. Oh, so I can issue them? Interesting. But they appear pleasantly vague. Uh, I guess I'll look at the station call. These are quite sinister in turn. They give a date and time for the person to appear at the specified precinct police station. Below the call are the criminal charges you risk by not appearing. All in a print so small it could be considered downright cute. Enough of these. Yes, all that remains now is to fill those forms and hand them to people. Fines for wrongdoers, interview requests for bad guys, and field autopsies to dead guys. The rest of the stinking cellulose is much worse for wear. Being sandwiched between the board and the rest of the paperwork must have spared the fragile copy of paper. Let's uh, put this away now. That is interesting, though. I apparently can, like, issue fines and send people to the police station and stuff. I mean, that's 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 pretty powerful. Can I interact with this at all? It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? There's actually quite a lot to read into here, actually. Look at all that content. Oh, boy. Here we go. What are you going to say about a broken, tossed-away mug that you dug out of the garbage? 
The mug will be useful. By denouncing it, I can earn political capital to mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement. If you want to earn some change by guilting people, go for it. But if you want to earn real dough, finish the case and start getting paid again. I'm trying. Believe me, I'm trying. It's not proven quite as easy as I was hoping. Wow, you work hard. I do? Oh, yes. You hustle. You're a provider. It's tough out there, but you keep it real and provide. Uh, what hard work do I do exactly? Look at yourself. You're a human pedometer. You must have walked 200,000 steps down cracked asphalt, mosaic, sand, and linoleum after you re-emerged. That is the sign of a hustler who never gives up. The world is harsh and people are evil. You didn't make it that way, and you won't let it break you. You ride. Yeah, but I ride a little. A little? You make money. You got gills, baby. Got those black papers with the faces of the innocents on them. You bring in the Franco Negros and the Solas. Oh, that's a... Uh... Yeah, okay. It ain't easy, but you do it. Day in and day out. You didn't make the rules, but you won't lose. You're a cop and a sprinter. And a money printer. I guess I've got some gills, sure. Sure, sure. And has it been easy? Is life easy? Have you not gone into cardiac arrest? Are you not about to have an anxiety attack or shoot yourself in the mouth? But you still hustle 24-7, ride or die. Now, ask yourself, are you rich? No, I'm actually not. That's right. You work harder than anyone. You almost rode yourself to the grave, and you're still practically a hobo. Why is that? I don't know. Why am I so poor? Because of the taxes. G-Man's got his jam-covered sticky fingers in your pocket, stealing from you every time you buy, sell, walk, talk, fart, so much as sneeze. Our tax is almost non-existent in the Gossam Estate, that is Revachon. Yeah, I thought there were no taxes. You and I both, but they got those indirect modes of taxation. Sales tax, excise duty, extraction tax. This tax that doesn't even have a name. Plus, there's the stuff people in other countries pay for that makes them ask for more money from you here. The Gossam Estate's a myth. In total, the coalition government is taking 98% of all your money. Are you sure? That seems like a pretty big number. What are you not sure about? They're milking your nipples till they bleed. Can't you see? Aren't you sick and tired of having bloody nipples? Bleeding nipples are kind of a pain, but how would deregulation help with that? It's all about the tax issue, Hustler. No other problem in the world is as present as top marginal tax rates. And don't you fucking forget it. <laughs> don't know about that one, Chief. Don't know about that one at all. Um, but, once again, we appear to have reached our uh, allotted time, which I allot myself, so I can't pretend that anyone else is allotting that upon me. It does seem like there's still quite a lot of stuff to explore. We're four episodes in, and we're still just, like, wandering around chatting to people, but hopefully some stuff will start to make sense in time um and next time i have to click this first though i'm sorry i have to Hobo cop. oh technically you wouldn't be a cop anymore but a hobo that would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures but who knows where the hobo part takes you to the bar the old l'assommoir to the pier or the sewers to le royaume where, for 300 years, they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long-forgotten triple malt bourbon, then fight the Ardamakan beast that lurks the bottom-most sepulchres. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Interesting. Have your special collector's edition tear bottles on the map? Interesting. More money from selling tear, learning cap, shivers... 
raised to six, which I don't think I have any points in yet. <laughs> but yeah, I guess that was that was worth doing. I guess that was a thing. Oh, this will lower my empathy. Not that interested in that one. Anyway, we were wrapping up, but I got distracted by the whole hobo cop thing. So uh, more of this next time. Bye. Ba bang 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 bang. See ya. I did little finger guns when I said bang 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 bang, but I don't I don't have a webcam, so it's kind of kind of pointless. Oops.